Hey, what's up guys? Happy to have you back for a brand new video. If you are new here, welcome. Today we are talking about a man named Adolfo Constanzo and his narco-satanist cult which sounds exactly what you think it is. People who come from a Hispanic culture recognize that although religion exists strongly within our community, something darker lies within. Santeria, black magic, la santa muerte, brujería or witchcraft, and curanderismo. I mean, the list goes on and on. And while some people don't really believe in things like that, Adolfo Constanzo was a man who believed in it all. So for background, Adolfo Constanzo was known as a drug dealer, serial killer, and cult leader. But how the hell did he get involved in all of this to begin with? Well, he had an interesting childhood to say the least. Adolfo de Jesus Constanzo was born on November 1st, 1962 in Miami, Florida. He came from a Cuban background with his mother, Tele Delia being an immigrant of Cuba. Delia had Adolfo when she was only 15 years old. She would marry several times after some of her husbands ended up dying and also moved a few times to Puerto Rico before making their permanent stay back in Miami. Adolfo practiced Catholicism as a young boy and his mother even had him enrolled as an altar boy. Now, Delia's beliefs seem to be the earliest introduction to something other than what Adolfo was used to, which was Catholicism, because she often traveled to Haiti with her son to learn about voodoo. As a teenager, Adolfo was intrigued with different practices, so he earned an apprenticeship with a local sorcerer. This person taught Adolfo something called Palo Mayombe, which is one of the three major Afro-Cuban religions present on the island. The other two are Santeria and Abacua. Generally, people will practice both Palo Mayombe and Santeria because they kind of work hand in hand together. However, a person must be introduced to Palo Mayombe first in order to continue to practice Santeria. So Palo Mayombe, or Palo for short, is a practice that involves animal sacrifice. And it wasn't long before Adolfo's neighbors spotted dead animals around the Constanzo home and even in front of their own doors. Adolfo's sorcerer, otherwise known as his occult godfather, was known in town as a very financially successful man. He profited off of drug dealers who came to him and asked if his spirits can help them to make big important decisions with their shipments of drugs. Now, going back to Delia, Adolfo's mother, she remarried for the third time to a man who was involved in the palo practice, as well as drug dealing. All of this exposure led Adolfo to make very poor decisions. He was arrested several times as a teenager for vandalism and theft. His behavior even led him to be expelled from college prep school. In 1983, when Adolfo was fully an adult, he wanted to pursue a modeling career, so he decided to visit Mexico City to embark on his new endeavor. He made a living by being a tarot card reader, which many people seem to enjoy. He lived in a place the locals called, quote, La Zona Rosa, or the Pink Zone, which was home to mainly men who cross-dressed. He returned to Miami, but not before finding his first disciples, Martin Quintana, Jorge Montes, and Omar Orea. Martin and Jorge would actually become Adolfo's lovers later on. In 1984, Adolfo went back to Mexico City and made his stay permanent. It was during this time that he realized he had so much influence on these people. He was admired because of his good looks, quote unquote, and respected because of his involvement with black magic. 
Adolfo took advantage of all of these people, remembering the words of his godfather, quote, let the non-believers kill themselves with drugs. We will profit from their foolishness, end quote. So now Adolfo's work consisted of reading the future for people, offering ritual cleansings, also known as limpias, for people who believed were hexed or cursed. and ritualistic ceremonies. Adolfo kept records in journals every time he performed any service for people. In his journal, he had a total of 31 loyal customers. And by loyal, I mean loyal. People saw the success in Adolfo's business and they wanted to be a part of it for life. You see, Adolfo had managed to charm very important and very wealthy drug dealers. He offered to help them schedule meetings and shipments on the basis of his rituals and predictions. He offered black magic to drug dealers and their hitmen that involved basically them becoming invisible to police. And according to people, it worked. So the drug dealers and people alike kept coming around. One customer paid $4,500 for one single ceremony. Adolfo also had a menu for sacrificial beasts, with roosters going for six dollars a head, goats for thirty dollars, boa constrictors for four hundred and fifty dollars, adult zebras for one thousand one hundred dollars, and even African cubs at three thousand one hundred dollars each. Eventually, Adolfo also attracted several high-ranking corrupt policemen, which if you are Hispanic, you know that that's no surprise. Anyway, he attracted several high-ranking corrupt policemen who introduced Adolfo to Mexico City's most powerful drug cartels. Adolfo believed he needed more power in order to provide more power to these wealthy individuals. So him and his three disciples of this new cult decided to invade graveyards in search for human bones in order to use them in his cauldron. Adolfo promised his customers that human bones would serve as a more powerful source of protection. To no surprise, everyone seemed to allow it. After all, his customers sought out power and protection at the expense of anyone. Plus, they seemed to get a kick from the violent displays of Adolfo's black magic. In 1986, Adolfo was introduced to the Calzada family, who back then were at the top of the list for being Mexico's top narcotic drug cartel. He swayed the family into believing his ideologies, and soon enough, Adolfo was able to buy himself a $60,000 condominium and even an $80,000 Mercedes-Benz. When Adolfo saw how successful his rituals were for the calzadas, he asked to be a full-time business partner with them. But when they rejected this idea, seven of the family members, which included the leader of the cartel, disappeared. They later would be found with their fingers, toes, ears, brains, and spines missing. And as a result, Adolfo had used those body parts to feed it to his cauldron to make himself even more powerful. By this time, everyone referred to Adolfo as, quote, el padrino, or the godfather. Later on, Adolfo was introduced to another cartel, Elio and Ovidio Hernandez, aka the Hernandez brothers. Here is where he also met a woman named Sarah Aldrete, who was a U.S. citizen. She became known as, quote, La Madrina, or the Godmother. She became second in command of Adolfo's new cult. So this new cult basically revolved around Adolfo's practice for palo mayombe or, you know, just black magic. They seemed to just be so involved with it and so loyal to it that at this point in time, his disciples would pretty much do anything and everything. In 1988, Adolfo and his cult moved out to Rancho Santa Elena, about 20 miles from Matamoros, Tamaulipas. The place consisted of only one one house out in the middle of a desert. Here is where Adolfo took it a step further and realized, much like his animal sacrifices, 
live human sacrifices were the best way to protect his customers and guarantee immunity from any law enforcement for their drug smuggling operations. And it wasn't long before the place was scattered with 20 victims whose bodies seemed to be missing a few body parts. Now, this led to the murder of a United States citizen named Mark Kilroy. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to go into all of the details of his disappearance, of his killings, because we would just be here for hours. But to be fair, Mark was a pre-med student from the United States who was on vacation with some friends. He was kidnapped in Matamoros, Tamaulipas by Adolfo's disciples and was taken back to the ranch. Here, he was tortured and sodomized before being murdered in a human sacrifice. Mark was then killed with a machete and had his brain removed. They boiled his brain and inserted a wire through his spinal column. They amputated his legs at the knees and buried him afterwards, along with 14 other people who were buried in shallow graves. So according to Adolfo, he believed that if he was able to grab the brain from somebody from America that would make his rituals even more powerful. It's kind of twisted, but that was his belief. The murder of Mark Kilroy marked the beginning of the end for Adolfo Constanzo and his Matamoros cult. With Mark being a student at the University of Texas in Austin and family members turning up the heat towards Texan politicians, it was a race against time to find out what exactly happened to Mark Kilroy. Both Mexican and U.S. authorities believed there was some sort of foul play involved, but they were very short on leads to make any conclusions at all. But with the pressure of the public, given that this case made headlines all across North North America, Mexican officials were able to track down four of Adolfo's cult members, including the Hernandez brothers. They were able to conclude that Adolfo Constanzo and his cult were responsible for the murder of Mark Kilroy. This led to the raid of the cult's ranch. Upon their discovery, they found Adolfo's cauldron, which he used to perform hundreds and hundreds of rituals. They found a dead black cat and a human brain inside of the cauldron, actually. Police dug around the ranch and found 15 different corpses, one of them being Mark Kilroy. So for a little bit of context, Mark Kilroy was in Mexico on spring break. Him and his friends were pretty much out drinking and they were in some sort of local bar. And that is when Adolfo's disciples decided to just kind of kidnap him and take him back. Like I said, it's a very lengthy disappearance, so if you want me to do a video of just his disappearance and his death alone, I can. But as for this story, that is pretty much what you need to know. The manhunt to find Adolfo and the rest of his cult members was now in full effect. Adolfo was now working with all the odds stacked against him. Officials knew everything. It's so funny because they were able to find Adolfo and the rest of his followers, which included Sarah, only because of an altercation they were having in some random apartments. When Mexican officials approached the apartment, Adolfo knew then and there his luck had ran out. There was not a single spirit there to help him. There was nowhere to hide and he was all alone. So Adolfo handed the gun to one of his disciples and his name was Alvaro de Leon and yelled at him to kill him and Martin Quintana, who was his lover, if you recall. Because Alvaro was so loyal to the cult, he did exactly what he was told. When police opened the door, they found Sarah and Alvaro were the only ones left alive in the apartment. So police gathered a total of 14 of Adolfo's cult members and were arrested and taken to jail. As far as the public knows, the Hernandez brothers were each given 60 years for their crimes and Sarah was given 30. 
years. If and when Sarah is released from prison, she will be extradited to the United States to prosecute her for the murder of Mark Kilroy. It upsets me that Adolfo had no courage whatsoever to face the consequences of his actions. His initial plan was to scam people by using religion as a facade, but what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down below. And with that, we have reached the end of today's case. That's all the content that I have for you guys this week, so with that being said, stay safe and be kind to one another, and I will see you guys next time.